Hello again everybody, welcome to my latest video. Well today I'm going to be talking about PC power supplies, also known as power supply units or PSUs. Now I've talked about these before, but this is not going to be as in-depth technically, although I may show one of the charts that I think is significant later on. The main thing I wanted to talk about though to start with is a new type of power supply that I've gotten. Now these have been around a long time, but it's the first one I've been able to get at an affordable price. It's called a small form factor. And this particular one is from Corsair and its model number is the SF450, which means that it's for a small factor case or a case which you just want to have more room in. And this particular one is 450 watts maximum draw, or maximum load can be applied to it. This is also, by the way, just to let you know, my first 80 plus gold efficiency power supply. Up to this point, I think the highest I've ever had was bronze. So this is a step in the right direction for me as well. But the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna open up this particular one and we're gonna take a look and see what it looks like. We'll look inside and I'll talk about some of the features that make this one unique from a regular power supply. So as you can see here, I didn't even take the shrink wrap off yet. Oh, it doesn't have the usual flip top to it. Usually it flips to the top on most at least the Corsair ones that I've had up to this point. Yeah, now, now it does the flip over. Okay, so now it comes off at one end here and flips over. Bunch of manuals in here, surprisingly. This talks about this whole series called the FS series, and it talks about all the different types of features that are applicable to it. Let's take this guy out. Comes with a bunch of tie wraps. Oh, and a, a case badge. I have never seen that before. Now normally these things are very expensive, especially since it's both that SF small form factor, which is what the F SF stands for, but also the fact that it is a gold rated. Yeah, it's a real nice solid case badge that they give you with this. Save that. Not sure if I'll use it, but we'll see. Although I heard somewhere that these case badges make the computers run faster. I haven't been able to prove that one way or the other at this point, but you know. Then we get a regular power cord. Nice thick gauge. And then this one is a fully modular power supply. So all of the cables, including the main power cables for the, that goes to the motherboard are also ones that you only put on as needed. This is nice if you wanted to put custom cables on. So you can order these in custom colors or whatever. I don't plan on doing that if I use this one. It's gonna probably be a case that you don't see much. I am glad to see that they're all nice and flat and they're all black. That'll make it, you know, a little bit easier to hide them, I think. What does it have? Oh, <laughs> they still have Molex. What does it have in terms of uh, PCIe and such? Let me open this up and take a look. Again, this is only to 450, so chances are they're not going to give you too many cables that would normally come with a higher wattage version of this. That's regular, looks like a quadruple SATA power. Of course, the Molex, which hopefully I don't use, but we'll see. Then we have the, um, the CPU power, 8-pin. What is this one, a PCIe? So this is for a video card, a six pin. This one here, also PCIe, but this one's an eight pin. So this one here looks like it's only six pin. No, it is It is eight pin, I stand corrected. They were just already butted together, I think. So two eight pins, that can support quite a number of different types of video cards. And then there's a standard power supply cable. Okay, I'm gonna have to add to this if it goes into my new server because I got uh, more than <laughs> four SATA, but I have no, no video cards in that one. Okay, let's take this guy out, see what we got. Wow, this is really little. Looks like this, look at that. Let's open this up and take a look. SF450, that's a little big for an 80 millimeter. It might be slightly bigger, maybe a 95 millimeter fan that is, and it doesn't really matter. This is relatively small. It's got enough connectors to go up to three PCIs, and uh, it only has enough of these for two peripheral, which is really all I expect to have is two peripheral. I may have to move and, and use one of my spare cables that I have for, for the SATA, so I get a, another four out of, well, at least three if I build my new server. I haven't decided yet. Now, I'm gonna talk about these labels. I'm gonna talk about that in relation to power supplies in general. So I'm gonna be putting up on the screen as I talk about different power supplies, the labels, and what is significant to be looking at on those labels. 
What I'm going to talk about after this is actually more of a, it's almost as much of a safety issue, maybe even more than a safety issue, than the fact that, uh, you know, you might be having a power supply that, you know, doesn't meet the specs that you need. Actually, they go one hand in hand when you think about that. If you don't meet the specs, you come out too low, then you are at risk of overheating it. What does it say here? It says, uh, silent operation at low or moderate loads. In this mode, the fan will not spin. So it's got some intelligence to it that usually comes with more expensive power supplies. So we'll see how that goes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to next get a tester and hook this up and make sure that it's working. I have gotten a tester and I've said in a previous video this only tells you really if the thing is completely dead. It doesn't tell you whether or not it has a problem with you know increased load or if there's an intermittent problem with it, but it'll tell you if it's completely dead or not. And then I have the cables set aside. Obviously, I'm going to need the one that goes to the 24 pin connector, the 20 plus 4. You connect these up down at the bottom here. I have it powered off, by the way. It was not powered off. I had to power that off to make sure that that little 1-0 switch was in a zero position. Matter of fact, let me unplug this for a second as I put these in. So this first power connector, it's going to go into this top where it says the 24 pin ATX. Let me put that in. It won't fit wrong because the cables will not match. So I'll click that in there. And then I'm going to put one of the uh, 12 volt connectors, the uh, PCIe. And I'll show you why I need to do that in a moment. So that goes into any one of these three. By the way, I thought we had enough for three of these cables. We don't because one of them will be used by the CPU power supply. That one fits in the same connector, so that one will use up one spot of these three. So we'll put one of these in right now. And this is the cable that would normally go if you had a video card. It will come on when I put this one on it, 24 pin that would go into the mother motherboard. So it came on and all the power supply voltages are showing because I have this motherboard one connected in. Now why is it beeping? It's beeping because the power good signal came in with the wrong timing. And that be that's because there's no load on this. So let me put a load on it. The load I'm going to put is I happen to have an RGB strip here. Still rolled up, I'm not gonna unroll it. It's a regular 12 volt RGB. I've got the controller here. It requires 12 volts. So what I've done is I've connected it up to that one connector I was uh, you know, making a little fun of before the, B, the Molex connector. But we need this in order to power this. So I'm going to plug this into one of the two peripheral spots that we have here at the bottom of the power supply. That'll give it a load. And when we give it a load, we should be able to see some action on the RGB strip. Let me power it on again. Now we have a load and now it stopped beeping. It stopped beeping because it has a power good of 280 milliseconds. If that number is less than 100 or over, I, I think about 400, then something's wrong with the power and it will not be a proper timing if there's no load at all on the power supply. Okay, so we know that this power supply is good. That's why it's good to get this little tester. It'll cost about 10 bucks. I think both Amazon and Newegg sell them. I forget where I bought this one from. If I unplugged, for example, now 12 volt one, you'd see that's the only real source of 12 volts. And we're getting a beep now because it's missing the 12 volt signal. You see the double L there? That means it's no good. But it just goes to show if you're missing a voltage or you have a bad cable, this is a good chance to go ahead and test all the cables, which I'll probably do before I pack it up again. So as you can see, this is a pretty good little power supply and it is gold. So it's uh, 80 plus gold, not just the bronze or even the silver but only 450 watts overall, which is meant for a small form factor case. They are all the rage these days. That's why these things are so much more expensive. And that's why it's hard to find a lower wattage one like this, because if th this is probably gonna go into a server or a PC that is not gonna have a high power GPU in it, a video card that is. So 450 watts should be more than enough. But it's always good to get these little testers as well. And one thing I forgot to mention here, this one didn't come with one because it was so cheap, but you need a bracket. If you're gonna put it in a case that is meant for a full size ATX power supply, you need a bracket. I had to buy this individually and this cost like another $7. Oh well, it was still economical overall. And you need this in order to mount this into a case that's expecting a full size ATX power supply. And you have your choice when you put it in here. I won't tear off the label, but the holes are, are available for it. And you can put it in this way if it if that's the way you want it to fan the face. But if you want more room in the case, it's usually better to do it the other way 
and then it would be this way, excuse me. If you do it this way, then you have the fan on the inside, and then you have more room, assuming that the case wall is right here. So it all depends where your case wall is, how you want to orient this, and it can go either way. The actual connectors for the power supply cables are in the back, so it doesn't really matter. But you do have to make sure that this is oriented so it can get the air that it needs. And what it's going to do, it's going to be sucking air in from this, and it'll be blowing it out the back. And let me show you the next part of this video, which is the power supply labeling and output wattage. I have next to me the other four additional power supply units I have off of my stock shelf. I'm going to go through them. So the first one I want to show is one I just recently got. Very, very inexpensive. A Corsair VS500. This thing came with a $20 rebate and it was only like $43. So I only paid $23 for this power supply and it had free shipping. The important thing is this label that's on the back. Sometimes you'll find it, find it on the back, sometimes you'll find it on one of the sides. You rarely will find it on the front. But this label, which I'll, I'll show a picture of on the screen right now, actually defines how this power supply is really going to output its power. If you take a look at this, it shows the output wattage of all the different voltages. But keep in mind that the key one here is the 12 volt. The 5 volts, the 3.3 volts, the negative 5 volts, the negative 12 volts, they are not used much at all. So when you see a label that actually shows the combined of all those wattages, it's misleading because they'll give you a pretty large wattage, for example, on the plus 5 volts, 20 amps, and they'll give you another high wattage output of 24 amps for the plus 3.3. Those are nowhere near what you're going to draw from them. That's why a reputable brand power supply will have the one that is only for the 12 volts, in this case the one that says 480 watts, that is the value that they would pick for the power capability of the power supply. Now they are 20 watts short here, which is a little surprising for Corsair. It's the first time I've seen that. But then again, this is a very low end, you know, it is 80 plus, but it's not 80 plus anything. So we call it 80 plus white. To be safe, you might want to say, okay, this is uh, 480 watts because that's what the label says for the 12 volts. Now, let me show you a couple of the other ones here. This one here is one that I had gotten the mystery box. I had ordered it, you know, during the beginning of the pandemic. I could not recognize what I had ordered, to be honest with you. So I had actually opened it up to see what was in it, and this, this was inside the box. Well, this one here, if you look at the label on the back, which I'll put up on the screen as well, it shows a 12-volt capability of 636 watts. Hmm. But yet the power supply advertises that it is a 735-watt power supply. So you got to be careful of that. If you try to put a true draw of 730 watts, some people might even round it up to 750 and think that that's safe. They're going to be way off and this thing will overheat. At the very least, its life expectancy will be shortened. So just be aware of that. Now, the other two that I have, and I'm putting them in order of wattage, the next one I have is the one of these that's allocated to a PC build, my very next PC build, what I call my high-end AMD build. I've shown this in a recent video. It's the all-white Corsair CX750F RGB. So it has RGB on it. It's fully modular, so all of the cables can be selected. And again, that's if you wanted to change them out more than anything else. The semi-modular works in most cases, but if you want custom colors, this is the way to go. Now, these, this particular one has nice white cables, so I have no reason to change it out. And then finally, the oldest of the bunch that's been sitting on my shelf is one that I bought actually in the middle of last year, so about a year and a half ago, and I haven't used it yet. This one is an EVGA 850B3. It's an 850 watt power supply, and it is uh, also fully modular and has a couple of neat features to it. But if you looked at the label, and this one here, it's on the side, you will see that it is set for, on the 12 volts, it shows 849.6 watts. That's close enough to 850 to suit me. So the 850 labeling in this case is actually accurate. Anyway, that's something I wanted to cover in this video that I found is important not just for making sure you don't uh, you know, get something that has false advertisement on it, which a lot of them out there do. You gotta be careful. Try to look at the label before you buy it. Most of them you can look at pictures of it and hopefully you can catch a picture of the label. Now, if you can't see a picture of the label, 
that should be a hint, you know, if you know what I mean. So just be aware of that. You want to see what that label is and make sure that the wattage you count is the one that's on the plus 12 volts only. Okay, now I won't get into more technical details of power supplies and how this is handled. I'm just going to say, you know, be aware of that. Internally, they have a lot of different characteristics. Is it one rail of 12 volts or two rails of 12 volts? Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show a slide up on the screen here. This slide shows the efficiency ratings and what they mean. I'm not going to go over this in any detail in this video. I've done it in a previous video, which I will put a, a link to at the end of this video. You'll have one of the end screens that point to that video. That covers what I wanted to cover today. Hopefully, you got something out of this video, and if you did, if you could do me a favor and subscribe to my channel, or at least consider subscribing, it would really be helpful. It doesn't cost anything to subscribe. I haven't said that in a while, but I think some people are still confused by that. You won't get a bill from YouTube. And until the next time, take care, stay safe, and stay healthy.